It worries me to know. It worries me to know, she cried, her voice both sharp and high. Her dress was yellow as the hide of lions in July. It worries me to know, she cried, and then she rolled her eyes aside. Her friend, a dowdy-looking man, began to tap his shoe. His collar was of astrakhan, his hair and beard were too. What is it worries you to know? He said in accents lush and low. But she had rolled her eyes aside, as though she were not able to quell an inward rise of tide, and feared to slip her cable. He turned to where her eyes were bent, upon a golden ornament. Talk not of fancy, friend, to me, though you are old and wise. My trouble is with what I see. That's where the mischief lies. It worries me to know. And then, it worries me, she said again. Perhaps if you could amplify your statement, child, I could draw from my wealth of wisdom I have never understood, and juggling to and fro with it could give some angle that would fit. Oh, you are old and full of years, but haven't got a clue. What use is solace to the fears my soul is stumbling through? Even that ornament of gold is quite enough to turn me cold. Your thwarted and convulsive thought is mere child's play to me. These mental wanderings are naught but biblic fantasy. You are a whimsy thing and do not understand what's good for you. It's you who'll never understand your ancient cold and blind. He heard her turn, then felt a hand pluck at his socks behind. Apparently she's on the floor. He thought, what next? I'll speak to her. Child, 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 he said. You must not be so prone to scoff at someone else's head, because it's not your own. Your wishful dreams are gaunt and blue. Your hand has blood upon it, too. My hand has blood upon it. Oh, what grisly work is this? What do you mean? It's white as snow, the kind a prince might kiss. A figure, dear, of speech, he said. It doesn't mean your hands are red. I've always hated them, and now you've brought them up again. Brought what, my dear? I'll take a vow I don't know what you mean. Those figures, sir, of speech, she cried, her eyes as wild as they were wide. I've known them all and exercised as many as I could. I've had the priest, and he advised I chopped down half the wood. A lovely wood of oaks it was, whose branches creaked against my house. But it has gone, and for a time the figures let me be. Their speech was all about a crime I did when I was three. And now you've let them loose once more. She rose and wandered to the door. Oh, I must leave you now, and leave you now for all my days. Adieu, adieu, my heart shall grieve in multitudinous ways. Though you may have your theories, I shall nurse a child named Poetry. And those dynamic things that lie within a carrot's brain, the passion of the wormwood fly that grows against the grain. If you were such as I, you'd sing the praises of a buzzard's wing. I will away. You are not of my calibre or clay. You grope down the provincial groove and theorise all day. You're old and clinical and can't accept me as a simple plant. 
There was no answer, for alas, the wise and cloudy man fled, like a story come to pass, directly it began, and faded gently through the door, and she was left to hold the floor. She held it bravely till the pain of blisters at her palm forced her to leave its oaken grain and wander to the farm. The cattle mooed, the byres were clean, but oh, what did their psyche mean? All flowers that die, all hopes that fade, all birds that cease to cry, all beds that vanish once they're made to leave us high and dry, all these and many more float past across the roofs of Gormenghast.